Good afternoon. My name is Christopher Hammer and my student mentor is Demi Bentley. I'm here today to talk to you about my final action research project, which was grading participation in the foreign language classroom. More specifically, this is a Spanish classroom. It is the beginner level of the language, uh, also known as Spanish 1. Some students start this in high school, freshman year, uh, but my students started as seventh graders in the middle school level. I look forward to talking to you and let's just dive right in. So to start off with, we'll go over the topic and a quick overview of the problem that exists. The research topic, the teacher researcher or myself chose to investigate active participation and the impact of participation in the foreign language classroom. The reason for this or the problem that exists, active participation in a foreign language classroom is on the decline, not only in my classroom, but other classrooms across the nation. And if we really think about it, learning a second language, the second language acquisition process, you not only need to be able to read and write a language, but you need to be able to listen and interpret. You need to be able to speak it and then understand the culture uh, of the different countries around the world that speak that language. If you are not participating in the language, that means you would not be speaking the language and you will never truly get to that end fluency level, that acquisition of the second language. That's why one of my major research questions is what is the relationship between a graded participation policy and the frequency and quality of student participation in foreign language classrooms? A reminder, my classroom was a Spanish classroom. The action research project was conducted in a Spanish classroom, but it really does apply to all levels and all foreign languages uh, that are taught in the United States. The second research question that I had, uh, which I did not write up here, is what should be taken into consideration while creating and implementing a classroom participation policy? And the reason I didn't write it up is it's really based off of the first one. If the relationship is a good relationship, if adding a participation policy does increase the frequency and quality of student participation in the classroom, then what do we need to keep in mind before we implement the policies? What do we need to do with our students? What do we need to pre prepare our students for? Uh, and then what we can do as ourselves as educators to make sure things run smoothly and have the intended effects. The intervention to the problem that I had during my action research project. First, I implemented a graded participation policy for a two week period. Uh, this is something new to the students. Most of my students have never had a participation policy in their Spanish classes. And really the only class that they mentioned having participation policy in was PE. Clearly, physical education, you need to participate as well. This intervention was implemented during a 10 hour or the two week instructional unit uh, that was a regular AR verb unit. If you're familiar with Spanish, those are the verbs like dibujar, cantar, escuchar, any verb that ends in an AR. And during this instructional unit, I also incorporated several engaging technology activities, which I'll actually give you a sneak preview of. The first one, online formative assessments. These assessments were created using Google Forms, allowed students to consistently and frequently go back, retake the assessments, and automatically have them graded and sent back to them. Additionally, multimedia presentations. We'll get a sneak peek of one in a minute that involves Harry Potter, uh, which the students love. They not only lo love the concept of Harry Potter, but they love the music and the graphics that it incorporates. Finally, a speaking practice assignment through Google Voice. Uh, I won't be able to show you how this works, but Google Voice is essentially a free phone number that is not associated with a mobile phone or a landline. It is connected with your Google account, with a teacher's Gmail, and students can call you on it. Don't worry, you don't have to pick up. Uh, and they can leave you voicemails. This way we can start practicing orally and participating orally outside of the classroom to get students more comfortable participating in the classroom. The reason for this, foreign language. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's foreign. Students are not used to doing it. And for a lot of students, this creates an identity problem. 
They think they sound funny. They're mispronouncing words. They're making their classmates laugh. Sure, some things are okay to laugh at, but we never want this to discourage a student from participating. So that's why I have this assignment. It encourages participation, gets them comfortable speaking the language, so then when they get to class, they're more comfortable and more apt to participate. So really quickly, I'll show you what the online Google form looks like and then the multimedia presentation. Okay, this is to show you a little bit as to what the formative assessment looks like online. Uh, it is available, linked from my classroom website at all times for students to interact with. We do take it during class, but it's always up there for students to take, not only during class, but after class later on to make sure they're hitting those benchmarks. So the first step, students are required to input their email address, which is where the results are sent. So I will put my WGU email, just so you can see. Part A involves multiple choice questions. Choose the correct AR verb ending for each subject. So I will blow through this very quickly. I'm not sure on your depth of Spanish grammar knowledge. But just so you guys can see kind of what it looks like, this last one, I'm going to purposely answer it wrong, just so you can see what it looks like in the results. Ice is the correct answer. I'm going to put ah. Part B, write the correct verb form. All right. Just so you can see what it looks like, I will write the correct answer for the first one. Dibujan. Then the last ones, I'm just going to put not sure. Still studying, maybe next time, question mark, another question mark, and submit. So after students click submit, they can simply go to their email that they previously listed on the assessment. They will get a no reply email with their results. As we see, I earned 6 out of 12 at 50%. As we can see, scrolling down, if you get the answer correct, it highlights it in green and shows you, yeah, your answer was correct. And then down below, our incorrect answer. It not only shows you what your answer was, but it also shows students what the correct answer is. So that way, when they go back, they'll be able to re-analyze the question and kind of understand where they fell short. All right, same thing down below on part B. I got the Wuhan, right? And then all these other ones that we filled in with silly answers, obviously we got wrong. As I spoke about earlier, uh, I involved engaging multimedia presentations. So this is the Harry Potter presentation I was talking about earlier. What it requires is that essentially I take worksheets and I turn them into presentations. And they not only are, are more engaging to students, but they're more apt to pay attention and then uh, want to do another activity in the future like this. So take a look. It's a fill-in-the-blank worksheet that was transformed into a multimedia presentation with audio. Let's take a look at the participation policy I implemented. So there were three parts to it, uh, their overall grade. The first part was the teacher, myself, kept track of the number of times each student participated uh, using tallies on their seating charts over the two-week uh, study period. After that, I took a look at the number of tallies and awarded them points based off of the number of tallies they earned. If they earned six or more tallies, they earned 10 points. Five tallies earned nine points. Four tallies earned eight points all the way down until zero tallies. If they earned zero tallies, they did not orally participate at all. Uh, they still earned two points a week unless they did something uh, incredibly outrageous or something that merited losing those points. If they just slept through class, you would not earn any points. But if you still sat there and did not orally participate, uh, you did still earn two points. The second part to that, student self-assessment, uh, and they needed to justify their self-assessment with examples, how they participated, 
what activities they liked, uh, and they rated themselves on a five-point scale. So after that, this subtotal of five points was added to the previous 10-point subtotal for a total participation grade of 15 points. Uh, just a keynote, the participation policy, they earned points out of 15 points. Before the participation policy was implemented, I did still keep track of the tallies and awarded uh, their participation grades on a 10-point scale. Uh, so when you took a look before at the research, the charts, the data collected, it was averaged in percentages. So the first one, the pre-study, was out of 10 points. The second percentages were taken out of 15 points. That way, we're comparing apples to apples with a percentage comparison. So my data collection and analysis methods. The research design, it was an action research project which collected both quantitative and qualitative data. This data was triangulated to come to my final conclusions, which we'll see in just a minute. I did receive informed consent from all the guardians of the participants or the legal parents. Uh, additionally, I received assent from the participants themselves. And then I had four key data collection instruments. First was student participation grades. What these were, I took participation grades before the study was implemented and before the participation policy was implemented just to see how frequently and the quality of student participation before there was a participation policy. After I implemented the participation policy, uh, I did the same process using the same rubric, same methods, just so we can make a comparison to see both the frequency of participation and the quality of participation, how it was affected with the implementation of the participation policy. Additionally, I had a pre and post study questionnaire, which all 65 participants took. The pre study questionnaire asked students about their participation preferences and their reception to oral participation grades. In the post study questionnaire, students were asked what, if any, impact they believed formal grading policy had on their participation during the study. Final was a teacher researcher reflective journal. This was a journal I kept throughout the process before the implementation, during the implementation, just to see what kind of matched up afterwards. Were my feelings the same as my students' feelings that they wrote in their questionnaires before and after the study? Which activities did my students find engaging? Did I note the same thing? and just overall which activities worked well and how I felt the participation policy was going. Finally, I analyzed the data from these four collection instruments and I came to my final conclusion. Before we see that conclusion, we're gonna take a deeper look at the analysis of the data. The first analysis that I talked about, the average participation grades were compared from before the implementation and then the implementation of the participation policy to see kind of what the difference was between the two. Notice the top three on the chart compare pre-study, and then the bottom three are during the study or how the implementation of the participation policy uh, affected their participation. Notice I broke it down even further into boys' participation and girls' participation, and I'll touch on that later as to why I did that. If you take a look now, you can kind of see it's interesting to see that there is a clear difference uh, it, besides first period in both my second and third period class there is usually a six to seven percent gap in the participation policy between girls and boys and it's kind of interesting to note that that there is a clear divide between the grades that they earned not only before the participation policy but also during the participation policy if you take a look at this data, there is a clear trend, not only in boys and girls and the entire class averages, that from before the study to after the study, there was about a 10% increase in all categories, girls, boys, and then the overall class average. The second area, the common themes regarding engaging activities were taken and discovered in the questionnaires and the reflective journal. So if you take a look down at the chart below, this is based off of what percentage of kids responded that this activity was engaging. So likely games, 78.5%. 78 
of participants said that games were a highly engaging activity. Going down from there, group activities at 49%, uh, and then smart board activities rounding up the top three categories. Beneath that, also a large chunk of students, artistic projects, being able to write on the board, alternative assessments, uh, and then 4% of students said that there were no engaging activities. The second analysis, also taken from the questionnaires in my reflective journal, uh, was which activities could be more engaging or which activities discouraged participation. What could we do to make class better? What could we eliminate? So if you take a look, it was the same thing. What percentage of students responded with these activities or these lessons? Uh, the largest category, 37% said no more lectures, less lecturing, less teacher driven. Uh, second place, less individual work. They like working with partners. They like working with pairs, groups. Finally, in the top three, more group work. Notice the correlation there. Less individual work, more group work would make it better. Uh, then rounding out the bottom category, still a notable percentage of students responding. Less speaking Spanish. Sorry, that's not going to happen. That's mandatory. We have to do it. Uh, we will get more comfortable doing it, and that's probably why they responded that way. They aren't at that comfort level speaking the foreign language because, like we talked about earlier, it's foreign. Second thing, more games. Writing on the board more. And, of course, just like before, nothing can make class more engaging. Clearly, there's a huge correlation between these activities that they wrote as discouraging participation and the other engaging activities, right? More group work more games, more engaging activities, more writing on the board. It's nice to see those correlations between the two questions. The final data I analyzed was also from the questionnaires, and that was to re review common themes uh, of the perceived benefits of participation. This was a question asked the students as to how they felt the implementation of the participation policy and how participation uh, they felt impacted the class, what they thought of it. So 52%, over half the class, believed that participation increased their overall learning. We can't prove this with the data that we collected, but it, it at a bare minimum is a perceived benefit of the students. Uh, additionally, they felt it increased their engagement, it helped them remember facts, uh, increased their level of preparedness in class, and also increased their overall work ethic. These are things that the students said themselves. Notice a lot of this data from the past th three charts that we've seen has come from the student questionnaires. So after I analyzed the student questionnaires and came up with the common themes that they identified, I went back to look at my teacher's researcher's journal just to confirm. Oh yeah, wow, they really were engaged during that group activity or wow, that lecture stunk. They did not like it. They were not engaged. They did not ask questions. They were not prepared. Right? And I noticed with my reflective journal that all these things really were true. Not these perceived benefits because there were, those were their personal benefits, but the other sides. Right? Right here. Oh no. No more lectures. No more individual work. I noticed that these activities did not work well with the students. However, these activities, the artistic projects, the games, the smart board activities, just their ability to write up on the board and group activities, whether it be a small group with just a partner or a group of three or a group of five, these were much more engaging activities and I noted these in my journal. So the final conclusions based off of my data analysis. A reminder, my first research question addressed the relationship between a graded participation policy and how frequently and the quality of the student participation in the foreign language classroom. So based on my data, I agree. The data from the study shows that the implementation caused an increase not only in the quality but also the frequency of student participation. Students also believed that the participation policy increased their learning, their level of engagement, and their ability to remember facts. This was not only seen 
in the data regarding their participation grades, but the questionnaires at the end, and the teacher's reflective journal. My second research question regarding what should be taken in, into consideration while creating and implementing a participation policy. I went further with this research question because after coming to my conclusion with research question number one, I really needed to know, okay, participation policies, they are a good thing, but what do we need to be sure of before we implement them? So the major key point, I got this not only from my reflective journal, but really from the student feedback and the questionnaires, was that student input should be received in the creation of the policy and students should receive frequent feedback on their progress. They don't know if they need to participate more if you never tell them that they aren't participating enough. Same thing, if their quality of their participation is not there, you need to let them know this. Uh, additionally, you cannot simply ask for their input. Uh, there's stuff that you need to do to make sure that it's fair. First, you need to have engaging activities in class. Not the ones that I necessarily listed because those are tailored for my students, but you need to realize your students' strengths and your students' weaknesses and make activities for them that will engage them and have them actively participating in class. These are the activities that I saw uh, being group work, partner work, no more lectures, being able to write on the board, playing games. These activities were what my students identified as engaging. Additionally, you need to have a room and a classroom environment that is formatted to allow for engagement and collaboration among students, either between students and other students or between yourself, the teacher, and the students. Uh, the best way to do this, and I have this in my classroom, was to create a U, kind of a horseshoe with the classroom, with the seating chart, and I know not everybody's classroom allows for this, and to create activities such as partner activities that allow for engagement. This is necessary in the foreign language classroom. Partner activities are great because they get in that foreign language practice with speaking the language. The one thing I really want to emphasize is the student input. Not only uh, their input as to which activities are engaging, but really to sit down with the students and create the participation policy with them. Ask them what they think is a fair participation policy. Ask them how they should be graded, how frequently, what kind of feedback that they need. So that way, at the end of the day, uh, that co-collaboration really ensures that it is a fair policy and that the students will perceive it as fair and that's really the key goal at the end. So based on the data, the conclusion is clear. I believe that the implementation of the participation policy is a solution to the research problem. It increased the frequency and the quality of students' participations in my classroom. I recommend though, just as I just spoke about, uh, that the implementation of the foreign language Now for my final conclusion. Yes, indeed. Based on my data, I agree that the implementation of the participation policy was one solution to the research problem. It did increase the frequency and the quality of the students' participation in my classroom. However, we have to remember that this does not mean that it is the end-all solution. There are other solutions out there to solve the same problem and solutions that can enhance uh, the results even more, maybe a participation policy and something else to add to increasing the frequency and the quali quality of student participation. The key that I want to remind you though is that simply implementing a participation policy is not enough. There's other considerations that we talked about that you need to keep in mind. That is getting your students input, having a well-designed classroom, that allows for collaboration, allows for engagement, allows for participation. Then the final part, those activities. You need engaging activities and you need activities that allow for engagement and participation. If you lecture every single day in class, there is no room for participation. You cannot assume or demand that your students participate if you do not 
provide them activities that allow this. Now for the strengths and weaknesses of my overall research design uh, and my action research project. A major strength is that I am a subject matter expert. Uh, my undergraduate degree is in foreign language, specifically Hispanic studies. Uh, so that really helped me understand not only the participation policy, but how it was affecting their overall comprehension of the language. The second part is that I was not only the classroom teacher, but I was also the researcher for this project. Uh, with something as delicate as classroom participation, it was essential that I played both roles. If there was somebody else in the classroom as the researcher, this could off-put students, not make them comfortable to participate, and really have skewed the results. Now, two of the major weaknesses of my action research project. The lack of student involvement and the input in the creation and implementation of the participation policy. I did not receive a lot of student input. I did have a pre-study questionnaire but I did not reach out to them before to design the participation policy. I simply implemented it and expected that they follow those rules and that's what needed to be done. As I learned through research and through their questionnaires, it won't be perceived as fair unless they have their input on it. So that's one of my major weaknesses and something I will change in the future. Additionally, the timing of the implementation of my participation policy. Uh, unfortunately, I had to conduct this research right after returning from a two-week winter break. Clearly, this has an impact on student participation. They are not in their normal routines. Uh, so I do believe this might have skewed the data a little bit. It might have lowered the overall results. Uh, additionally, one of my research classes, there were three overall classes, the first period class had lower results for participation uh, before the study and after the study. I just believe that, unfortunately, I had a class first period of the day. Students aren't in their normal routine yet, uh, so that's why I believe it was lower, but it was consistently lower, not only before the study and after the study. Uh, so although this data, uh, this may have skewed the data slightly, the after winter break implementation and having a first period class, I don't believe that this data skewed the overall findings of the study. Uh, if not for these weaknesses, I believe that the increase in student participation would have been larger uh, and simply further solidify the findings. Regardless of the timing of the implementation, uh, there was a clear over 10% increase in student participation grades and their perceptions of engaging activities and their perceptions of participation uh, were spot on. They agreed that it increased. I simply believe the implementation of the participation policy, if it were at a later date, would have possibly had an even bigger increase in participation and students would have agreed participation increased their results even more if it were implemented later on. Now to discuss the future professional application. So, given the results and the conclusion of my study, I plan to permanently implement a participation policy within my classroom. However, just as I spoke of earlier, uh, I will seek student input before implementing the participation policy. Uh, just to create a fair policy everybody's on board with, uh, that they understand what the expectations are, and that way I can fairly grade them against that rubric that we create together. Additionally, I will analyze every class that I have to make sure I create activities that engage them, that encourage participation, uh, therefore making it a more engaging class and easier to participate in. Additionally, I will keep uh, my room arranged in, in an engaging way, keeping that U shape. Uh, potential future research topics. Uh, so kind of where this research project has taken me and where I plan to go with the future based off of uh, what I found and what I found interesting within the research. First thing is the impact of participation policies on student learning and comprehension. 
So I know based off of my research that the participation policy increased student participation, but how does participation policies impact overall learning? Uh, to, so kind of taking it one step further. I know students thought uh, increased learning was a perceived benefit, but the data can't really back that up until further research is done. Additionally, what different factors, uh, such as which activities, how the arrangement of the classroom, how these particular factors impact student participation? Uh, we know their perceived benefits based off of their questionnaires and which activities they prefer, but really, how much better is group work than lectures? How much better is a game than a worksheet? Or vice versa, you know, how, how much better a, a worksheet can work right now as opposed to writing on the board? So how each individual factor has its impact on participation and their overall comprehension of the material. Uh, additionally, after noticing the difference between the average boys and girls participation totals, I believe it would be interesting to further investigate how gender affects participation in the classroom. Uh, this wouldn't only be considering the gender of the students, but also the gender of the teacher and how this impacts student participation, whether it be a male teacher interacting with male students, a female interacting with female students, or male teacher, female students, kind of how each category, how uh, each gender of not only the teacher, but also the student, how that impacts overall participation. All right, that concludes my final presentation on my research project. I'm hoping that regardless of your content area, whether it be Spanish, French, a different foreign language, or a different subject area, uh, that you found something beneficial that you can take back to your classroom today. A quick reminder, a recap of what happened. Uh, I implemented a participation policy in my seventh grade classroom to see how that would impact overall student uh, participation because participation in foreign language classrooms is on the decline. Uh, the data that I collected via questionnaires, participation grades, and my own personal journal uh, helped me conclude that the participation policy did increase not only the frequency but also the quality of student participation. Additionally, I discovered that when implementing a participation policy, there's several considerations that you must take. Uh, first, you must get student input. That way, the program is perceived as fair uh, and students agree with how they're being graded. Additionally, they'll understand the benefits that go along with it. Uh, besides that, you as a teacher, you not only have to rearrange your classroom to make sure that it is an engaging environment uh, and conducive to cooperative learning, but you also have to make engaging activities that work for your students. Some student activities, uh, or some activities that work for my students, group work, games, uh, multimedia presentations, alternative assessments, uh, but make sure you're making activities that are engaging for your students because that's the key. Every classroom is different, uh, but hopefully you'll notice a participation policy uh, has the same effects, maybe not as drastic, maybe more drastic, in your own classroom. All right, good luck, keep teaching, and have a nice day.